All right, UFC Fight Night Shields versus Ellenberger predictions and Strike Force Grand Prix predictions. Sort of a bit of an abridged, abbreviated version because I want to get both in one video. And the capture function tends to cut you off sometimes. So here we go. Uh, Justin Edwards, George Lopez. Don't particularly care. Neither guy I see being destined for terribly long term UFC uh, status. I will go with. Uh, Lopez on any unanimous decision. Robert Peralta, Mike Lolo. Mike Lolo, the guy best known for getting the shit kicked out of him, basically, to the point where his legs couldn't support him anymore by Edson Barbosa. Robert Peralta, who's, I think, a bit of an overrated guy. I believe he beat Takaya, if I recall correctly. This will hopefully be the only time I have to look it up. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, yes. He's riding high off, of course, the split decision victory over here to Takaya. Aside from that, only other names that are really going to make sense are he lost to Yari or, uh, Reyes. Going with Robert Peralta here due to the fact that Mike Lowell, I don't believe, has UFC level anything. Um, he has a decent rubber guard, but he does not have terribly good wrestling, and his stand-up is next to non-existent, taking Peralta by unanimous. Daniel Roberts, TJ Walderberger. Um, having more, if it wasn't for the Claude Patrick fight, I would probably have taken Daniel Roberts in this fight. I think he's a better striker and grappler than uh, TJ Walderberger, but actually watching him get uh, wrestled like he did against Claude Patrick, I have to go with TJ Walderberger winning a unanimous decision, being able to wrestle him here and take the decision. Seth Bakachansky versus Clay Harbinson. Again, two guys that I don't really see being long-term in the UFC, a pair of former tough competitors. I'm going with Seth Bakachansky because I think he does have some skills, whereas Clay Harbinson, I think he's just a really tough dude, and that's about it. Bakachansky by a unanimous decision. Uh, I think he's a slightly better wrestler. I think he's a slightly better stand-up guy. I think he's a better grappler. Um, Ken Stone versus Donnie Walker. Don't really care, to be honest. Two guys who I'm just not excited to see long-term. That being said, um, Donnie Walker got beat by Jeff Hoagland via wrestling, and um, I think Ken Stone's a better wrestler. So Ken Stone, unanimous decision. Matt Riddle versus Lance Benoist. Don't really know a lot about Lance Benoist. He's kind of coming out of right field with me here. He does have a win over Cloburn Walker, who's a guy I do know. That being said, Matt Riddle should win this fight. I have not seen Benoist fight, but looking at his results, he appears to be just a bit of a can opener. That being said, he could be the next big thing, and he could probably beat the crap out of Matt Riddle. We'll see, but I'm going to play it safe and pick Matt Riddle. Evan Dunham versus Shamar Bailey. Dunham's a better wrestler, better stand-up, better grappler. He takes this one over Bailey. Bailey's pretty hard to finish, so it might go to the judges. Riddle, by the way, just decision. Um, let me see, he got finished twice. Roger bowling and a cut. Yeah, mm, yeah, I'm gonna go with Dunham by decision here because I think Dunham needs a win. I think that might cause him to be slightly more cautious. Cody McKenzie, Wagner Roca. Here's a stunner one for you. I'm taking Cody McKenzie to submit the black belt because Wagner Rocha has no cardio at all, it seems. I think he's going to get tired. I think he gets tapped by the deadliest catch in the second round. The first round, I think, will look ugly for Cody McKenzie, though. Cody McKenzie, though, a determined guy. He will, at some point, get that guillotine on you, it seems. And if Hosh is tired, I don't see him getting out of it. Jason McDonald, Alan Belcher. My thoughts on J uh, Jason McDonald are pretty well known. Um, I got Belcher here via second round uh, TKO. He comes out there looking to finish and doesn't come out there looking to just decision kind of like he did um, if you recall the Ed Herman fight. I don't see McDonald being able to get him down. I don't see McDonald being able to strike with him. I don't even know if McDonald's really a better grappler than him. I got Belcher TKO second round here. Something flashy, hopefully. Jonathan Brookins versus Eric Koch. Um... Tempted to go with Brookins because I think he, if he can get Coke down, he can control him because it's what he does. That being said, his just complete lack of stand up is mind boggling. And Coke does have pretty good stand up. Coke's a pretty well rounded guy. But I'm going to go possibly against the grain. I'm looking to see who's been being picked in this fight. But I'm going to go with Brookins by UD, being able to get Coke down, being able to control him. Maybe he, he might finish him, but he didn't finish Michael Johnson, which makes me think. He will probably not finish Eric Koch. Court McGee versus Dongi Yang. 
Dongi Yang is not that impressive of a fighter. Um, his UFC run has been a win over Rob Kimmons, which seems to be you have to do it before he fought in the UFC. His biggest win was over Pavel Nastula. He beat. Uh, he lost a split decision to Chris Camozzi. It was a close fight, but that being said, Court McGee is kind of a lot like Chris Camozzi, you know, well-rounded guy with some heavy hands, decent striking, decent wrestling, decent grappling, etc. Good gas tank, toughness, but better. And I see Court McGee probably taking this one by decision over Dongi Yang. Jake Ellenberger versus Jake Shields. Going to surprise a lot of people going Jake Ellenberger here. Jake Shields just lost his father. He doesn't do well when he can be out-wrestled. I think Ellenberger can do that. I think Ellenberger is better on the feet. Shields is just woeful on the feet. You look at the Mayhem Miller fight, and that's what I think we're getting here, is that, is that the Ellenberger is a, a more athletic, better wrestler version of Mayhem. I don't think he finishes them, but I believe this is a five-round fight, if I remember correctly. Or is that happening later? Honestly, don't know. Don't have the time to look. Comment below if you know. If this is a five-round fight, I'd take Ellenberger to finish in the fourth round. If this is a three-round fight, I'd take Ellenberger by decision. TKO finish for Ellenberger. All right, so Strike Force, Heavyweight Grand Prix, semifinals, starting off with Dominic Steele, Chris uh, Mirzwak, I think. Don't know either fighter. Not going to offer up a, a prediction. They're 6-1 combined. Their opponent's records is well below 500. That's all you need to know. Alexis Davis, Amanda Nunez. I think Amanda Nunez takes this by unanimous decision. I think she's a better grappler, a better wrestler, and um, I think the advantage on the feet does go to Davis, but Nunez is also a little stronger. She'll be able to take her down and take the UD, like I said. Jordan Mean versus Evangelista Cyborg Santos. If Cyborg cannot finish this in the first round, I'm taking Jordan Mean. I'm taking Jordan Mean anyways by a decision because he's not the biggest finisher in the world in Cyborg. You know, even when gas is reasonably hard to finish. Um, mean, I think, has the stand-up to trade with Cyborg once he starts slowing down. I think he has the better ground game. I think he has the better wrestling. I think this is going to lead to a UD for Jordan Mean. And welcome the third big prospect of Canadian welterweight fighters. Then we have uh, Marcos Rogerio de Lima versus Mike Kyle. I don't rate Mike Kyle very high. Thus, I'm going with Marcos Rogerio de Lima. I think he's a better grappler. I think he's um, will push the pace. And Kyle's only weapon I find tends to be I can hit you really, really hard. And that's it. And I don't think uh, Delima's chin is that bad. Pat Healy versus uh, oh, uh, that's for a method. I'm going to say uh, second round TKO for Delima. Maximo Blanco versus Pat Healy. Maximo Blanco theoretically might have been on roids according to Pat Healy, and there's a certain amount of evidence for that, we'll put it that way, speculation. Um, Blanco, though, on paper, better wrestler, better striker, better grappler. Fighting in America for the first time, that could be interesting. I'm still going to take him to stop Pat Healy in the third round, though. Uh, Pat Healy's a mercurial fighter. He might come out amazing. He might come out crappy. Um, whole, you'll... Yoel Romero versus uh, Feijal. Wrestler versus Feijal, bit short. You know, admittedly he's been finishing people, but his stand-up still looks very rudimentary. Got to take Feijal. TKO in the second round. That's what Feijal does. King Mo versus Hodger Gracie. Going out of limb and taking Hodger Gracie. Obviously one of the world's best big men in BJJ. King Mo, a very good wrestler, but his grappling has not looked great. His stand-up has not looked great, and I think when it comes down to it, wrestler instinct will take over. They'll take him down, get subbed in the second round via a guillotine or possibly a triangle choke. Throw that out there. Luke Rockhold versus Jacare. Uh, Jacare will win this easily. The question is whether he finishes him. Luke Rockhold's a serious guy. Like He's beaten a number of good people lately. Jesse Taylor's on that list, a couple other good guys, but... Nothing with the level of Jacare's athleticism or BJJ. Uh, Jacare to win this however he really wishes. If he wants to finish it, he can finish it. If he goes a decision, he can win that too. Antonio Silva, Daniel Cormier. I think Bigfoot is too big, too strong, and too well-rounded for Cormier. I'm not one of these guys who has a lot of hype with Cormier. He's a good wrestler. His stand-up is okay, but he is so damn short at heavyweight that it, it does not matter how good his stand-up gets. Um... Silva via TKO, I'm going with second round. Josh Barnett versus Sergey Haritonov taking Barnett via unanimous decision. 
I think that he can hang in with Sergey on the feet. I think he can take Sergey down. I think he can control him on the ground. He could possibly finish him, but Barnett's not been terribly finish oriented lately. Hence the UD pick. So that's all. And enjoy.